What's the perfect streaming setup? Simple, fast, and always ready to go. No clutter, no headache, just hit record and create. If a setup takes too long, I won't use it. This video is all about that, building a simple, high quality streaming setup that works every time. I needed something that I would be able to record my YouTube videos, have my live streams, do my video calls, and all the conferencing through one setup because I knew that if it looked great and it was easily repeatable, I would be motivated to use this more often. The fact that I don't have to set anything up, I just have to turn on two lights, the camera, and make sure the mic is on, ensures that I do this consistently, which is for me way more important than having the latest and greatest. First and foremost is the camera setup. Now it's not necessarily the brand of camera that is important, it's that whatever camera you do go for has an external power source that'll keep running for the duration of your streams. For my setup, I have the Sony FX3. Now this is a dedicated video specific camera. I did a whole review right here, you can check it out, talking about why I love and hate the Sony FX3. But overall, it's a fantastic camera, completely overkill for a streaming setup. You can't really go wrong with a camera these days, and there are plenty out there that are amazing. But in my opinion, if I was to be starting out, I would probably go with the Canon R8. This is, in my opinion, by far one of the best entry-level full-frame cameras you can buy on the market today. The body plus all the lenses that are available for it is a great way to dive into full frame photography. And the video quality on this is also amazing. It This R8 entry level camera has the same sensor as the R6 Mark II. So if you don't wanna spend the money on the FX3, the Canon R8 is an amazing entry level camera that would be great for streaming. You can plug it in and use it like a webcam just with USB-C and it'll also power over USB-C as well. When I do use this, I tend to go with a dummy battery for it and HDMI out because then I can get 4K out of this camera with HDMI versus HD only if you use the USB-C out. So for an entry level 4K full frame camera, the R8 is in my opinion, one of the best cameras you can get for bang for buck. I'm gonna be doing a review on this very soon. I've had it for about a year. So I'm gonna talk about all the things that are great and not so great about this camera, but overall it's an amazing camera. And these cameras are definitely pricey if you're starting out. Another option is actually today's sponsor, the OBS Bot Tiny SE camera, which is an AI powered full HD webcam. Tiny SE is actually the latest in the Tiny series, building on the success of the previous two models. It has AI auto tracking and auto zoom, gesture control and presets modes. It has a resolution of 1080p and up to 100 frames per second, ensuring that your videos will look smooth. It's a great choice for a webcam because it is compatible with major live streaming and video video call platforms. And this tiny little camera packs a great sensor, which gives exceptional low light performance, which captures more light for reliable image quality, enhances sensitivity and reduces noise. And with a fast aperture, it also ensures vibrant colors and sharp details, regardless of the lighting situations in your space. I actually found in my situation, I had to lower down the sensitivity just to get the image that I was looking for. And with the ability to turn on AI auto tracking, you'll always be in frame. At any point, you can turn off auto tracking or play with the zoom in or zoom out feature a little bit too much, just like I did. So even if you're zoomed in, you'll always be in frame. And this camera offers three tracking modes, body part tracking, hand tracking, and zone tracking. One of my favorite things is the Tiny SE includes features to help safeguard your privacy. You know the camera is in sleep mode, it just points straight down. So if you do a lot of video conferences or online presentations and streaming, this little powerhouse of a camera is a great choice. Other little things that I've added back into my setup is having an overhead camera rig, which is more an iPhone rig where I can literally mount my iPhone above. Being able to use the iPhone camera allows me to have a secondary camera very easily at any time without having to plug in another camera. It is done wirelessly through the Mac using the built-in iPhone and Mac compatibility that links the two together. Ecamm is just able to see it. And this is just a simple iPhone adapter and it's connected to a C-stand that has rollers. So at any point I can just put my iPhone in and have an above shot ready to go.
And the reason this overhead rig is on a C stand because there are times when I create YouTube videos where I wanna do an overhead on this table, which that allows me to quickly move it. But regardless of which camera I'm using, I'm always using the teleprompter. This is the one thing that I recommend for anyone that does any kind of streaming or video conferencing. Being able to see the person that you're talking to while also looking into the camera is the key to connecting with anyone that you're talking to, be it streaming or video conferencing. Having a teleprompter isn't about reading the cues. It's about connecting with the people you're trying to communicate with. Eye contact has been shown to be one of the best ways to connect with people. And being able to do that across the world through this medium is more important than ever. Even if you're just video calling someone, a teleprompter should be the number one thing that you get after your camera. Now, it doesn't have to be this specific model. This is from Prompter People. It is designed to be used with an iPad, but I just have a 10 inch monitor that I'm able to flip the image and control it from my computer. So essentially this is just an external monitor that is connected to my computer that I just feed an HDMI signal to and it displays whatever I want. To be it a script for a YouTube video, the people that I'm talking with on a video call or live streaming so I can see what's happening in the chat or if I bring someone onto my stream, I can actually have a conversation with them directly. And I worked hard to be able to reduce the amount of tripods and stands in this space so it doesn't ever get in my way. My whole system is set up on one giant auto pole that is mounted from the ground to the ceiling with some tension and everything is mounted to that or my desk. For the audio, my favorite thing to use while streaming is the Elgato Wave 3 microphone. For the price, it is probably one of the best sounding microphones you can find on the market today. And it comes with the Wavelink software that allows you to put in EQ and other effects onto your voice to make your voice sound as good as possible while coming through live. I was never a big fan of buying external audio mixers. I just wanted to keep it simple where I plug the microphone directly into the computer and then do the mixing in software and then stream out. I've been trying to get rid of devices on my desk, not add to it. But I do have a secondary mic, which is more of a production mic that I have on when I record my YouTube videos, because I'm not a fan of seeing the microphone in the shot. And this microphone plugs directly into the camera and allows me to get pristine audio, which then I can mix in post-production. But for live streams, the Elgato Wave 3 microphone is fantastic because I can mix it live through the Wavelink software. And just like the microphone, the only thing that I use for a capture card is the Camlink 4K, which I bought years ago and has performed consistently since I got it. Everything else is just USB plug and play to make this setup as clean and simple as possible. The thing that drives this entire setup is my main M1 Mac Studio, which I've had for almost four years, and it drives everything. So when I'm doing a live stream and I'm screen sharing and showing the applications that I use and do any kind of tutorials, I wanted something that drives everything. I didn't want to have multiple keyboards or multiple mice and different setups and doubled up on a whole bunch of gear to make sure that this worked. For work, I needed to do video conferencing. So I needed to be able to share my screen of the actual work that I'm working on. And I didn't want to have a video capture card that then plugged into another streaming. It just, that became complicated. I had that for a little bit. So I actually set out to get a computer that was a little bit overpowered that would allow me to do multiple things at the same time without any hiccups. So when you're thinking about buying a computer, buy something that will last you three to five years easily and be able to keep up with how software develops five years from now. And thus far, the M1 Mac Studio has performed fantastically that I don't even need to upgrade just yet, though I'm always very tempted. For the streaming software, I use Ecamm Live, which is a fantastic broadcast studio in a box. It allows me to build multiple scenes like this countdown, have my main camera, but also with a few shortcuts on my keyboard, allows me to jump between different scenes. And I like that the animation is smooth and works really well. It allows me to stream in 4K, but also bring up comments that people have made. So it brings in live comments. It's all built into the software. It is a paid software, but it's 
probably one of the easiest and best ones that I've used that allows me to do all the things that I like doing during my live streams. And it has all the features that you would want. You can bring up widgets like this one. And I built this super chat overlay animation for when people are super generous. I just want to let them know that I appreciate it with a huge call out. And if you want this overlay animation, there's a link in the description for you to be able to pick it up for free to use in your streams. Also built into the software is the ability to manually control the OBS bot tiny SE camera. So right in Ecamm, you can choose your camera source and then control it and set it up how you like. And you can actually set up presets to animate to different locations based on the camera angles you want to set up. And Ecamm also allows you to add markers while you're recording to be able to go back to them and edit out those sections for little clips if you want, just by pressing one keyboard shortcut. And you can also add a marker with some text and I'll save that in a text file that you'll be able to check and find those moments very quickly. So instead of scrubbing through the entire live stream, you'll be able to find those markers very quickly of those nuggets that you want to then clip out and post onto your socials. And the beauty of this software and the team behind it is they keep adding amazing features all the time making it better and better. The amount of overlays and animations that you can do, I would say it's probably one of the best streaming softwares that you can have out there. One of the things I like about it is how each window is its own thing. You can move it around and set up the way you like to set up. But Ecamm Live is a paid program that is Mac only. But if you want a free option and you don't like using OBS, which I never did, that's why I like using Ecamm, is Meld Studio. And Meld Studio is just being developed, but it allows you to do so many different things and it is free. But I haven't played around with it too much, but as they keep adding new features, I'm definitely gonna be checking it out a little bit more, especially when they add in LUT capabilities, which they promised is coming. But Meld Studio is something you should check out if you're just jumping into it, because it seems like it's a great application and definitely worth checking out if you're just getting into streaming. It's definitely easier than using OBS. So another huge consideration is setting up your lighting. It doesn't have to be extravagant. I've tried to keep it down to two lights, one that bounces off the wall and one that gives me a nice backlight. But if you don't have any lights, you don't need to go and buy lights. You can do something as simple as put your setup in front of a window that doesn't get direct sunlight and that will light you nicely. The whole point is to make sure that your face is one of the brightest things in the scene. It has been shown that people look at the brightest thing in the scene as the first place they look. So make sure that your face is the part that is drawing all the attention because this is where you want people to be focused. You can have lights in the background, you can set all that up, but have that as secondary, something that you build onto. Make sure that you're lit nicely and exposed properly with the camera setups that you have. Everything else is secondary to that. All the little details that are in your set. Make sure that you have a good camera angle that has nice leading lines that come towards you. So having a good exposed image with nice composition and the great audio is what is going to make your presentations fantastic, be it streaming or even video conferencing. And that's the added bonus with this simple setup. The fact that I'm able to take this setup and then export it out to Zoom, Slack, Skype, Google Meet, I'm able to use this setup for every video conferencing app that I use. And anytime I'm in a meeting and it looks like this, I always get comments about, wow, you look fantastic. How did you do that? And that's why your streaming setup should be multi-purpose, which is the whole point of why I did this. I wanted something that was so versatile that I would be able to use it in every application and have a consistent look and feel for everything that I do. When I moved into this space, I wanted to make sure that everything was easily repeatable and put me in a position to make sure that I can continue creating content very easily. But I know at any point I can come with an idea, turn on the lights, turn on the camera, hit record and make that a reality. And the whole point of this is to make it easily repeatable and functional for multiple purposes. I wanted this setup to be as versatile as possible to be able to create as much as I am ready to create and have it be ready whenever I'm ready, not to have to set it up multiple times. Everything in this space has been designed to work as fast and efficiently as possible, as fast as I can come up with ideas. I tried to reduce all the excuses that I could have to creating content. 
Streaming is fun, but it's definitely nerve wracking. So the less amount of things that come between you and doing your stream, that's the goal that everyone should have for your streaming setup. Let me know what you guys think. Is there something that I'm missing from this setup that I should definitely add? I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, thanks for watching.